Hey everybody, Mr. Allison here. I uh, thought we'd do our lesson video a little bit differently uh, today. This way you'll actually be able to see me instead of just hear me. I hope all of you are staying healthy. I hope all of you are staying safe. Uh, do make sure you, you take time for yourself. Make sure you get outside, enjoy uh, the decent days when we have them. Uh, we will get through this and like I said, hopefully we will see you guys soon. All right, so for today, we're gonna continue on with rates and unit rates. We're gonna look at some real world problems. Um, with them. It's going to be very similar to the lesson we did the other day uh, in 5.1. We do have our two standards. Uh, 6RP3 and 6RP3B are the two standards that we'll cover in this lesson. Uh, before we get going too much farther, uh, I would suggest having a piece of scratch paper out. Just a plain sheet of paper will work so you can kind of jot down uh, a few notes as we go. I will uh, post the completed notes with this as well for you to reference. Uh, and then we'll have the homework assignment um, afterwards. So make sure you have all those materials and let's get going. All right, so for our first question here, we have a water uh, pump can dispense 120 gallons of water into a tank in 15 minutes. At this rate, how much water will the pump dispense in an hour? Okay, so here we have our relationship of 120 gallons in 15 minutes okay so that's what we um, have there now we're looking for how much does it dispense in an hour okay well we need to know the relationship between 15 minutes and an hour well we know that an hour is equal to 60 minutes well, we can get from 15 to 60 by multiplying by 4, which means if we multiply the 15 by 4, we have to multiply the 120 by 4. So that would give us 480 gallons per hour. All right, so this time I want you to pause the video, work through this problem, and resume the video once you have a solution. All right, so hopefully you have a solution to this. Um, if not, pause and get the solution, just like we do in class, guys. Okay, uh, we have a machine that can take 10 minutes to seal 50 boxes. At this rate, we want to know how much can it seal in an hour. So again, very similar to the one uh, that we just did where we have 50 boxes in 10 minutes. We have an hour. We know that an hour is 60 minutes. So to get from 10 to 60, we have to multiply by six. Which means if we multiply the 10 by six, we have to multiply the 50 by six. 50 times six is 300. So we get 300 boxes in an hour. Make sure there's not a second question on there. There's not. And we move on. So Mr. White painted an area of 450 square meters using six liters of paint. What is the area painted using one liter of paint? Okay. So for our rate, we start with 450 square meters with six liters of paint. Well, if you remember from our previous lesson, we wanna get that second number down to one. So to get that second number down to one, we need to divide by six, because six divided by six is one. So if we divide the second number by six, we would also have to divide the first number by six again, very similar to what we do with fractions, what we do with ratios, what we're, whatever we do to one number, we have to do to the other number. So we'll keep that in mind. So six divided by six is one, so we need to take 450 divided by six. Well, six would go into 45 seven times. 
Seven times six is 42. 45 minus 42 is three. So you bring down that zero, you get 30. Six goes into 30 five times. So we would get 75 square meters per liter of paint. So if we want to figure out how many liters of paint does Mr. White need for an area of 600 square meters. So now we're going to take our rate and I'm going to change up my right a little bit, 75 square meters per liter. And we need to get to 600 square meters. So we need to figure out how do we get from 75 to 600. Okay. And one way we can figure out how to get from 75 to 600 is we do a little division. And if you remember back to the beginning of the year when we were first discussing division, one strategy that um, I suggested was to look at that first digit and ask yourself how many times would seven go into 60? Well, seven would go into 60 eight times because seven times eight is 56. So let's see what 75 times eight is. Eight times five is 40. Eight times seven is 56 plus four is 60. Oh my gosh, look at that, it works. 75 goes into 608 times, which means we would have to take 75 times eight to get to 600. Well, if we take the 75 times eight, we've got to take our liters times eight. Well, one times eight is eight liters for our answer. All right, so again, at this point, please pause the video work through the problem and when you are uh, when you have a solution go ahead and resume playback all right so hopefully you have uh, an answer to this one if not make sure that you pause the video and get the answer just like we do in class guys all right so we have a machine that can fill 16 identical bottles with ketchup in two minutes so at this rate how many bottles can a machine fill per minute so we have 16 bottles in two minutes. We want to know per minute. So we have to divide the two by two. Which means we have to divide the 16 by two. 16 divided by two is eight, so it's eight bottles per Part B, at this rate, how many minutes will the machine uh, take to fill 64 bottles? Well, we know it's 84, eight, sorry, eight bottles per minute. We want to get to 64 bottles. Well, we should know, knowing our multiplication facts, that eight times eight is 64. So since I multiplied the eight by eight, I gotta take my minutes times eight. So it'll take us eight minutes. Okay. All right, moving on. All right, the table shows the fees at a parking lot and Blake parked his car there from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the same day. How much did he pay for parking? So when you have a table like this one, what I would suggest doing first is look at how is it broken down. And you'll see here it's first hour, second hour, after the second hour. So this one breaks it down per hour. So what I would suggest doing is breaking your work down per hour. So if you get there at nine, the first hour goes from nine to 10. Then the second hour is from 10 to 11. Next hour would be 11 to 12, 12 to 1, and then 1 to 2 is when he leaves. Well, the first hour is free, so that's zero dollars. The second hour is a dollar 75. After the second hour, it's two dollars and fifty cents per hour. So each of these is two dollars and fifty cents a little bit so I have some room to work. So 
to find out how much it pays, I just simply add all of these together. Five plus a bunch of zeros is five. Five, 10, 15, 15 plus seven is 22. Two, four, six, eight, nine. So Blake pays $9.25. All right, so again, pause here, work the problem. When you have a solution, go ahead and resume playback. All right, so now we have Tyler renting a bicycle um, for our uh, situation here. Um, and again, first start by looking at how is it broken down. Well, again, it's an hour and then half hour. So there are actually a couple different ways that you can Look at this one. One is if you keep it as is, where you go by hour and then every half hour. So Tyler's there from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The first hour would be 10 to 11. And if you're doing half hours, it would be 11 to 11.30, 11.30 to 12, 12 to 12.30, 1.30 to 1, 1.30, and then 1.30 to 2, okay? And for the first hour, it's $3, and then for every additional half hour, it's $2.50. Or maybe you looked at this slightly differently. Maybe instead of looking at the half hour, you decided to look at every hour. Well, if every additional half hour is 250, every hour would then be $5. So that is a, a possible solution for you here. So you could have broken it down by hour. So again, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 1, 1 to 2, okay, which would be $3 here, $5, $5, $5. $5. Either way we do this, though, you should get the exact same answer. Because if you look at what we did here with the half hours, those two 250s, those two 250s and those two 250s all make $5. 5, 10, 15, $18 over here. Five, 10, 15, $18 over there. So you actually, either way you do this, you do the same thing where you add the 250 to itself to get that full out. So no matter, it just depends on when do you add the 250s together. Do you add them at the beginning or do you add them at the end? All right, package of two brand A batteries costs $3.20. The manufacturer claims the batteries will last for 20 hours. A package of, brand, of two brand B batteries costs $2.80. The manufacturer claims the batteries will last for 14 hours. Which of the two brands is a better buy? Okay. And for those of you that have asked, well, where are we going to use this? Here, making those comparisons, checking prices, uh, determining which is a better deal. This is something that you will do multiple times throughout your life. Okay? So there are two ways we can do this. We can do cost per hour, or we can do the really hard way that adds up a whole lot of work is um, hour per dollar. So I don't know about you, but I'd rather do it the more efficient way, which is the cost per dollar hour. Okay. So we have brand A. Brand A is $3.20 for 20 hours. So again, we're going to divide by that second number. So we're going to divide both of these by 20, which means I'm going to scroll that down a little bit, which means we're going to take the $3.00 
divide that by 20. Well, 20 does not go into 3. It goes into 32 once. 12. Bring down to 0. 20 goes into 120 six times. So we have a cost of 16 cents per hour. Brand B is $2.80 for 14 hours. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to divide by the second number. We divide both of those by 14. So we take $2.80, divide it by 14. 14 does not go into 2. 14 goes into 28 two times. And then we can bring that last zero up. So we get a cost of 20 cents per hour. So we want to know which of the two brands is the better buy. And it's brand A, because you're going to end up paying less per hour of gaming or remote control car or remote control usage, whatever you use those batteries for. All right, go ahead and again, pause here, do your work, resume playback when you're done. All right, so Haley scored 87 points in five basketball games. Bianca scored 45 points in two basketball games. Which of the two players scored the most points per game? So if we're going again, we find that word per, so we go points per game. So it's 87 points in five games. We're gonna divide by five, divide by five. Take 87 divided by 5. 5 goes into 8 once. Goes into 37 7 times. Now, you could put remainder 2. However, we're going to figure out how many points per game. Remember, if we run out of digits, we put a decimal point and a 0 on. Bring the decimal point up. Bring the 0 down. 5 goes into 20 4 times. Haley, we would have 17.4 points per game. And then for Bianca, Bianca has 45 points. And there's the bell, but it's not time to go yet. In two games, so we take 45 divided by 2. 2 goes into 4 twice. Two goes into five, two times. And again, decimal point zero, decimal point up. Bring the zero down. And two goes into five, two goes into ten, five times. So you'd have Bianca with 22.5 points per game. So which of the two players scored more points per game? Bianca got more points per game because 22.5 is higher than 17.4. All right, using our graph, which is a skill that we've used before. Gabriel saves an equal amount of money every week. Good idea, Gabriel. You want to keep that, uh, uh, you want to build up your savings by doing that, put a little bit aside each week. It's a good life skill to have. The line graph shows the total amount of money Gabriel saves in eight weeks. So how much does Gabriel save every week? Well, let's scroll this down a little bit so we can see that a little bit better. So it'd be nice if at the one week that we were hitting an intersection, but we're not. You see that we're hitting right there in the middle. Now we could guess as to what that is, but we never want to guess. We want to be as accurate as possible. So that's why we're looking at the two and the 10 because it does hit at an intersection point right here. So if Gabriel has saved $10 in two 
two weeks, so let's divide by two, divide by two, then we know that he's saving five dollars per week. And we can verify that if we look at the four, he's at the 20, the six is at the 30, an outcome from saving five dollars each week. Okay, so if Gabriel is saving five dollars each week, we want to figure out how many weeks will it take him to total $80, okay? Well, there's a couple different ways that you uh, can look at it. One is you do take that $5 per week and figure out how do you get it from five to 80, okay? You could do some division. You realize that you would take five times 16 to get to 80. So you take your weeks times 16, and you'd get 16 weeks. Or if you look at this original where it was $10 in two weeks, to get from 10 to 80, you have to multiply by eight. So you multiply the two by eight and you get 16. So just a couple different ways that you can get that answer for that. All right, go ahead and pause here, work through this question. Resume playback when you're ready. Oops, sorry, my fault. This is not one that you pause. Sorry, I apologize if you did that. That's on me, not on you. Um, hopefully I can fix that. All right, sorry guys, this is a different situation. Humbly apologize, I'm so sorry about that. All right, the weights of different masses were attached to the end of a spring. The line graph shows how the length of the spring changed with the mass of the weight attached. Okay, so we want to know what the original length of the spring was. Explain your answer. Okay, well, if we look here, if there is zero weight attached, we are up here at 15 uh, centimeters. So the original length of the spring is 15 centimeters because that's where it was when there was no weight attached to it. So for part B, how much did the length of the spring increase for each gram of weight attached? Okay, well this is where you have to um, read things carefully and know what you're looking for. So we're looking for how much it increased for each gram of weight um, attached. Okay, so again we want to look for that intersection. We have one right here. Well the intersection is at 18 and 50. But if we're looking for the increase, we didn't increase by 18, we went from 15 to 18, which means we increased by three. So something to make sure that you're paying attention to. And then the gram was 50. Okay. So just simply take your division again. Some of you might be saying, we can't do 3 divided by 50. Yes, we can. Remember when we were dividing by decimals. I'm going to extend that a little bit so we can see the work. So 50 is our divisor. 3 is our dividend. Remember, you can put a decimal point and a couple zeros on it. 50 will not go into 3. 50 will not go into 30. But 50 will go into 300 six times. So our answer of how much did the length of the spring increase for each gram of weight attached? That was 0 0.06 centimeters per gram. Okay, now is when you pause work through the problem, resume playback when ready. All right, let's go with blue since we're talking about water in a tank. All right, so here we have the line graph shows the volume of water in a tank with a leaking faucet over 60 minutes. So we wanna find the volume of water that leaks from the faucet each minute. Okay. Well, you'll notice that it starts at 16 
100 milliliters and it's dropped to 1400 milliliters in 10 minutes. Okay, so it's the same idea as that last one we did. We want to know how much leaked. Well, if it went from 1600 to 1400, it was 200 milliliters. In 10 minutes, so to figure out how much it is each minute, we divide by 10. Scroll that down a little bit. 200 divided by 10 is 20, so it's 20 milliliters per minute. So, part B, we want to find the time in hours and minutes it will take for the tank to become empty. Well, in order for the tank to become empty, that means there has to be zero milliliters of water in there. Well, it starts with 1,600 milliliters. It's leaking 20 of those per minute. So we're taking that out. So we do 1,600 divided by 20. They both end in zero, so we can get rid of those zeros. Two goes into 16 eight times, and then we still have that zero but it does say hours and minutes. Well, this would be 80 minutes. Well, there's 60 minutes in an hour, so we'd get one hour, and we'd have 20 minutes left over. All right, our final question for today. So again, um, if you can read it, pause here, work through the problem, and then resume playback. All right. Hopefully you have an answer here. Hopefully you were able to read it. If not, I do apologize for that. You can just kind of pay attention as we go if that's difficult um, to read. All right. So here we're showing the conversion between the U.S. dollar and the Thai bot at a certain point in time. So we have the conversion... Uh, graph here. We have um, our US dollar on the left and our Thai bot down at the bottom to kind of help you understand that graph a little bit better. So for part A, we want to find the amount in Thai bot that can be exchanged for one US dollar. So we see down here that we have 300 Thai bot for 10 US dollars. So 300 Thai bot Ten dollars, which means we're going to have thirty Thai bot per dollar. Aki paid one thousand five hundred sixty Thai bot for a full day tour in Bangkok. How much did he pay in U.S. dollars? So it's going to be the same as what we did before in our previous question, where we're trying to figure out how much um, how much time it would take. Since we know that's 30 Thai baht per dollar, we're going to take the 1560 divided by 30. Since they both end in zero, we can get rid of those zeros. Three goes into 15 five times. Three goes into six twice. So he paid $52. And then finally, part C, which exchange rate is more favorable for a tourist who wants to exchange U.S. dollars for Thai bot, explain your answer. Well, money changer A, if it's 3,000 Thai bot for $100, since that ends in two zeros, we can get rid of those. That ends in two zeros. So for A, it's 30 Thai bot per dollar. Whereas for B, both end in zero, so we can get rid of those. 12 goes into 37 three times. 12 times 3 is 36. 37 minus 36 is 1. Bring down the 2, you get 12. 12 goes into 12 once. So it's 31 Thai bot uh, per dollar. So the more favorable exchange rate is B, as you get 
more Thai bots per dollar. All right, and that's it for today's lesson. Um, I hope you guys understand it well. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate uh, to send me an email, reach out, be looking uh, to join us for a Google Meet so we can answer any questions that people have. Stay healthy, stay safe. I miss you guys. Hopefully we will see you all soon.